Hello, hopefully by now you've watched the preliminary video on where you will find the triangles within the roof that you're going to be building. This time we're going to be looking at actually calculating those triangles out and the formulas that you will use to do that when uh, typing figures into your calculator. So we'll start off with a little picture, a little cross section of a roof here. We've got our two top plates at the top of our walls and here are a couple of common rafters running up the rake, uh, meeting up with our ridge board up the top here. So I'm going to throw some lines on here. These are the lines that we actually are calculating and measuring to. So this line that runs up the rake here, it touches the back of the bird's mouth cut where the rafter sits on the top plate, extends all the way down and it extends all the way up to the center of the ridge board. So this is called a backing line and this line is actually a line that you will mark on your piece of timber when you come to the stage of marking out your rafters. We've also got a horizontal line that goes across the top of the top plates and again meets at the point of the bird's mouth on either side and we've thrown a vertical line in right down the very centre of that ridge board down until it meets this horizontal line. So we've got a bit of terminology we'll cover which you may already know, but this here is called the span of the building, all the way from outside of top plate to outside of top plate. And this is basically the width of the building. We call it the span, and it's always where two common rafters meet together, where they extend from one side of the building to the other. The next one I'm going to look at is from the outside of the plate to the centre of where a single rafter comes up to or that single backing line comes up to in the middle of the ridge. So this is what we call the run of that rafter. So we've got two rafters here, so we have two runs. Now you'll notice this roof is equal pitch on both sides, just like a normal standard roof. So that means both the runs will be the same. So in this situation, the run is always half the span. So it's a very easy to get that run of that rafter straight off the drawings. If you had an unequal pitch roof where one side was steeper than the other, then those runs may not be the same, but you won't be dealing with unequal pitch roofs. We're just dealing with normal standard equal pitch roof. So span divided by two gives you the run of the common rafters. The next height we're looking at here is a vertical measurement from the peak of where those triangles meet down to this horizontal line. And that, for obvious reason, is called the rise of that section of roof, or the rise of that rafter. We've got a measurement now down the rake here from the peak of the bird's mouth cut, all the way up to the centre of that rafter where that line extends through. And this is called the geometric length, or the geometrical length. You may uh, occasionally hear the term true length thrown around. That is a term that used to be used for this measurement but it sort of fell out of fashion because people used to get that confused with the true full length of the whole rafter right from beginning to end. But that's actually not the geometrical length. The geometrical length is just from bird's mouth up to the centre of the ridge. So we've got also another length down here, which is another geometric length, but it's just the geometric length of the overhang or the overhang GL. It's very important that we keep these two numbers separate. And the reason is when you're working out creeper rafters which come down the hip, this geometrical length will change with each rafter, but the overhang geo will stay the same on each one. So that's why we keep those separate. The only other thing to look at is you'll notice that this backing line extends past where the rafter ends. So where you'll actually run your power saw and cut that rafter off, it falls a little bit short of where this triangle meets at the top here. And that's referred to as a deduction. So when you calculate your rafters, it's important to remember that that backing line or that geometrical length goes all the way up to the center of the ridge board and then you'll take that deduction off before you actually run your power saw through the timber. And it's important to remember that the deduction is a horizontal measurement, just like the run and the span, whereas the geometric length is a measurement up on the angle. So you can't simply go geometrical length minus deduction to get 
the end of your rafter length. They are kept separate because this is a horizontal measurement and this is an angled measurement. So that's the basic terminology. I'm just going to drop the timber work out and that just leaves us with a right angle triangle. And we're going to look at some formulas for calculating this triangle out. So the first formula we're going to use is what we call our GL formula. And this is the one we're going to use to work out what this measurement is up the rake here. And this is the one that we're going to use the most. So you'll notice I've got two uh, formulas written there. And which one you use will depend on your calculator. So if I'm using the calculator that I keep on my desk, my standalone calculator, I'll use this top one. But my iPhone calculator or the calculator on the computer works a little bit backwards on the back end here, so I'll use that one. So let's have a bit of a, uh, a practice run at this. I'll throw a couple of figures in there. And I'm going to bring up, this is my computer calculator. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to use this bottom one because this is the one that suits this calculator. I'm going to throw in my run. It's just simply run divided by, now I'm going to throw in the pitch in degrees, in this case 30. Now I'm going to hit the cosine button. Finish off with equals and that gives me a length of 5773.5. I'll round that up to 5774 for my geometric length. And there it is there. So it's important to remember that if you type one of these into your calculator and you get an answer that uh, doesn't seem right or is a bit crazy, it's very possible you should be using the other one. The next one we're going to look at is a rise uh, calculation. So to work out, to use these same two figures to work out what the height of this triangle is. This is a formula that you won't use as much as the GL. There's probably only a couple of occasions you'll need to use this one. And again, depending on which calculator you're using, depends which way around you put these two phrases here. So let's bring that calculator up again. And we will just cancel out of that. We're going to run these figures through. Now, remembering that when you're using your GL formula, it's divided by. But when we're using the rise formula, we're using a times. So we'll go 5 meter run times 30 degrees. And now I'm going to hit the tan button instead. Run times the tan of the pitch. Press equals. That gives me a rise of 2886. I'll round that up to the next millimeter, 2887. And there it is there, 2887. So this formula you won't use a lot but every now and then it will come in very handy. The next one and this is another formula that you will use quite a bit and usually you use this one on your hip ends. It's called Pythagoras formula or a squared plus b squared equals c squared or in this situation we call it the uh, hypotenuse length. The square of that hypotenuse equals the sum of the square of the other two sides. So what we'll do is since we've got those two figures, this is a case where you don't have the angle, but you have two sides of the triangle here, the two sides either side of the right angled there. So we'll bring that uh, calculator up again. And we're going to, I'll just move that up there out of the way. So we put these two in, so I'm going to go five, meters and then I'm going to hit the squared button which is this one here x with the little 2 above it plus 2887 again squared so we've squared the both of them it's important to press equals right now add them together first gives you the sum of both of those squares now we press the square root button which is this symbol here and that gives us a length down this hypotenuse of 57.73. We'll round it up to 57.74 and that's what we got there. Now you'll notice I've changed these labels. I've just got ABC there. I don't have run, rise and GL there anymore. And that's because most of the time when you're using this one, it's not a vertically sitting triangle. It's probably one that's running up the rake of the roof uh, when we're getting edge angles or edge or GLs of hips uh, and sometimes we might use it when it's a triangle on the flat.
and that will make a lot more sense uh, if you've watched the previous video. Okay, so the very final formula we're going to look at is a little different. This time, we don't know what the angle is, but we have these two sides. So this is a formula when you need to find out an angle using the two sides. And if you'll notice, this formula looks a lot like this one in reverse. So instead of using the run and the tan and the pitch in order to get the rise, we're actually using the rise and the run with tangent to get the pitch. So it's kind of the reverse of this formula. And just like anything that's in reverse, this one uses the times symbol. This one is using divided by. So with this formula, we just simply take the rise divided by the run. We find out what that is, and then we use the inverse or the shift tangent in order to get the angle. So again, the inverse tangent is the reverse of the tangent. So let's bring up this calculator again, and we're going to run that through as a test run. So the rise is 2887, we'll go 2887 divided by this run measurement, 5 metres. We'll press the equal sign, it's important to press that now. We get a long decimal number, and now, depending on your calculator, this one has INV, which stands for inverse, yours could have shift, and it could even have second function, depending on what brand of calculator you're using. But in this case, it's inverse. You'll notice that it's changed the tan to tan minus 1. And if I flick that back, we've got sine, cosine, tangent. And now each of them have changed to minus 1. So that minus 1 means inverse tangent on there. So I hit inverse tangent, and there we go, our 30 degrees, which is the angle that's in here. So here's the sum that we've done, 2887 divided by 5 metres, inverse tangent gives us 30 degrees. So what I would recommend is pulling out your calculator and running those formulas through using these figures. You can pause the video here if uh, you need to. And um, so you can see these figures and make sure you're getting the same answers that we got for uh, the figures in this triangle. And that'll be good practice at using the calculator to get these uh, answers. All right, good luck.